from last week. And is it time to fade the stock rally, my friend? When do you fade a stock rally? When does it make the most sense? A lot of times, you know, uh, a, a lot of people get infatuated, Jamal, with, uh, oh, I, I sold the high print in equities. And then they find out that like, oh, in a given year, especially the last couple of years here, man, stocks making high prints like 50 days out of the year. Like that, we see a lot of new highs in the equity market. So it's not as simple as selling an expensive stock market. And we're going to hopefully put some stats together that maybe don't uh, make kind of like anecdotal sense um, given where we've been in the last couple of weeks. Stocks have been pretty weak, uh, but some interesting statistics uh, and, and the reason why you might fade the stock bounce that we're seeing uh, here. When do you like to, to fade the stock moves or, or, or do you do so to even to begin with? Um, yeah, I think it all depends on the scenario. Uh, it, there's times where you know, you see a you see a chart that looks like the soybean chart we just saw, and you're like, okay, I gotta get in on this a little bit, right? And <laughs> then, <laughs> and then you have other times where, um, you know, for example, of what we just dealt with, you just had a big, huge two day move, particularly in in technology stocks, and you kind of wonder is the, what's the old. You could also sort of play into it over, along with the overall narrative. What's the overall narrative? And the overall narrative. For tech stocks has been to the downside because of impending rate hikes. So it just depends on how you really feel about it. And, and you, nailed, you nailed a piece that I think is essential to this, which is because uh, uh, we did look at, at a soybeans chart and saw, and what's particularly intriguing about that is yes, soybeans are moving through the highs, but the velocity of it is what's really intriguing to someone who's looking to fade a move and say we're talking about stocks. And it is kind of essential to this reasoning because you're right. The overall narrative is you know, softness in technology stocks, uh, people not feeling so good about um, some of these tech stocks given rate hiking environments and, and everything else. And so uh, you might think to yourself like, oh, this thing is moving lower. Maybe I'll just buy it. But then you see a, a huge update like yesterday. And this goes to the velocity piece, uh, Jamal, best day of the year so far um, in the small technology market. And I'm sure it was similar for NASDAQ and the tech sector ETF XLK. And though this market, if you look at the chart here, is it's not at its highs. And I think like I say, a lot of people, when the market is is moving, maybe at the start of 2021 here, and you see like, oh, it went from you know $60 to 62 to 64 to 68. There's a lot of high prints that you could sell getting caught up in there. But what we do see a lot of times, uh, and the opportunity I think in fading a stock rally is in that velocity piece when it's a really big rip roaring uh, rally to the upside. Um, that's what's more intriguing to me than getting that high print. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, what do you think about that? Am I? Do you think I'm I'm off base or because we've seen so many different uh, months turn into even years where the S and P 500 and a lot of these stock indices, Jamal, are new high on Monday, new high on Tuesday, new high on Wednesday. Maybe they take a breather, new high on Friday, um, and, and it doesn't seem like that's uh, necessarily the best indicator for fading uh, the stock market. Yeah, I mean, actually, when you put it like that, the that's actually a good indicator for buying it, <laughs> even though most yeah. of the time we're not looking to do that. That's actually kind of more of an indicator to buy. It. And so by the same token, I think it's key when you go like, go ahead to that next slide, because that kind of really puts it in perspective. The overall trend has been down. And while we've had a really big move here, you could make an argument for the idea of fading this because of the fact that the overall trend has been the weakness in these stocks in particular. So I think it's it's in order to have the idea of a short right here. I mean, why not? It's definitely possible. And and it is this idea of uh, volatility clustering, right? Like oh, if you're getting short the stock market, obviously you're looking for stocks to move lower and volatility to rise and what have you. And historically, I mean, this was true in the 90s, the aughts and the 2010s, volatility clusters in that you'll see a volatile couple of weeks or a couple of months. And then if the stock market, like Jamal was saying, if the stock market's at its highs, 
it tends to kind of continue at those highs. Uh, and then if volatility comes in, then you see that volatile action for a few weeks to a few months. And we're kind of in the midst of that right now, what is looking like one of the first volatility clusters in you know almost a year, maybe the last time was March and uh, you know the, the, the spring of 2021, where you see big down moves, big up moves, big down moves, big up moves. And that's what we're looking for uh, when uh, fading the stock market. And I put together some statistics here in small technology futures for the last year plus, Jamal. When the market starts the week up, a percentage point or greater. Yesterday, Monday, up three and a half percent in this market. Sticks has, on average, moved lower by a percent and a quarter the rest of the week. Now, today, Sticks is is up a little bit. It's definitely not up, you know, a percentage point or anything like that. But on Tuesday, now it's kind of hugging the the the. It's holding on to the rally from Monday. But you have seen a pretty significant trend to the downside following these big upside moves on Mondays. And it's the same for those big downside moves on Mondays. We've looked at this before. That's why you know there has been so much success buying huge high velocity moves to the downside as well. It's the same notion here, right? Absolutely, man. I thought, man, what you said was, was, was so uh, right on as far as volatility clusters, because that's what we see often. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's rare where it's just like a one day type of deal. Like we saw in February of 2018. Most of the time, it's going to be a couple of clusters in a row where we get these type of volatility uh, situations. Now, that being the case, a lot of people will like to combine this idea of stock s- stocks in general going down. We're going to get more volatility, thinking like, oh, if this is against the fade again, then we're going to get you know volatility measures or whatever, if you want, if VIX in or VIX above 30, 40. Not necessarily. We sure. could still have a slow slide overall. Right. Like we could still fade and, and not necessarily get a whole lot of volatility behind that. It just could be time to fade these stocks. So, you know, there is that. Absolutely. And that's what a great part of having the patience to kind of to not only when the market's moving to the downside, put your bid in lower and buy a huge down move. That's what we look for all the time or sell puts into that big down move. But also don't sell into that down move. Oh, volatility is cooking. I'm going to sell into this. We get these bounce backs. Those are the ripe ones to fade here as opposed to trying to pile on like you could have last week. And now you're getting whipsawed with the bounce back. And this also speaks uh, to some of the, the statistics that we look at at the small exchange standard deviations and also how standard deviations function into you know the next week, not only our day trades, but the next week of trades. This sticks market, Jamal, this was the forecast going into this week. It's 60 bid. It's above the highs that were forecasted for Friday of this week. And so fading that stock market is uh, still using that statistical basis. Um, you're essentially, whether it's upside or downside, us futures traders don't care so much. It's just, is it a high velocity move? Is it, you know, uh, uh, is it moving out of where it's projected to be relative to implied volatility or standard deviations and everything else? And that's the basis for fading a move in either direction, really. Yeah, I like that diagram, man, that uh, shows up in the newsletter every week. It's, it's a good way to kind of put your levels out and get an idea of where you expect something to, you can have an idea of where to expect it to move over the course of a couple of days. So this is always a good thing to look at for sure. Always put these in alerts and get an idea of, oh my God, this is this is the move. This is two standard deviations. Like, wow. And I'm glad you said that because we'll finish here with a little bit of a plug because we do have the, the if you become a community member from the small exchange, you get 50% off your exchange fees for life on all of our products. And you get weekly updates to that number and a bunch of other numbers for all of our products. Go to community.thesmallexchange.com. You can see what your mall is talking about with the great data, with the reduction on your exchange transaction fees for life. And if you join now, you actually get one of these cool shirts. Look at that, my man. That's pretty... That's That's pretty cool. Everybody who joins here in the month of February gets also a limited edition small exchange member shirt. Jamal, I'm sure we'll hook you up with one of these too, man. (laughs) What's our dude's name again? I forgot his name. Oh, crap. I forgot his name too. I I don't know. I think it was David or something. We haven't. He remains. Uh, Someone. All right. That's so you. That's so you. (laughs) All right. Enough of that. Okay. Let's end. All this personification of animals. 
Always good to have Jamal on, even when we disagree. I actually even like it more when we disagree, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us, Jamal. Everybody, thanks so much for watching Splash into Futures with Pete Moment. Coming up next, you're going to want to hang around. Some great futures trades coming at you. So hang out for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.